Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome, Rajiv, to this uh, masterclass. Rajiv Jairaman is the founder CEO of Nolscape. Uh, over the last few years, Rajiv has built a high-octane global team at Nolscape that delivers a superior technology-driven learning and talent transformation experiences for employees in modern workplaces. He is a TEDx speaker. He has a keen interest in the psychology of learning, design, and technology. Uh, prior to Nolscape, he worked at Oracle USA in the Server Technologies Division, where he led numerous product development efforts from the ground up. Uh, he's written a lot of blogs and articles and a lot of talks, uh, TEDx talks. So um, I would request you to look at his mentor page on our website and uh, do read those blogs and also listen to the talks. Um, his special interest is in the field of digital, in addition to design, technology, learning, and innovation. And that's why I thought he would be the right person uh, to talk to us about what this digital phenomenon is all about. Uh, we've all heard it and uh, we know we're living in a digital age and we all also understand that we need to be prepared for it. Uh, and uh, But we don't understand what really it means to be you know, uh, digital. So today he's going to clear the digital love for us. Uh, a few do's and don'ts, please keep yourselves uh, muted and your video off. Uh, you can always uh, use the chat window if you want to put in a comment or have a question or raise uh, the hand option and we will unmute you and allow you to talk. Otherwise, uh, towards the end of uh, this masterclass, there will be you know, 10, 15 minutes of time available for a Q&A with Rajiv and you can also ask your questions at that point in time. Over to you, Rajiv. Right, thanks, Nilza. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I hope you can see my screen and is my audio loud and clear? It's perfectly fine. Okay, great. Sounds good. We'll get started then. Uh, so I have about an hour with me. Um, so what I'll do is I'll present the central thesis of the book, uh, Clearing the Digital Blur uh, to you. And the last 15 minutes or so, let's have um, an interaction, a Q&A, uh, where we can have a discussion around the primary points that I will be making during the talk. So obviously, um, I've lived with this topic for about two years now, um, and it's coming out in the form of a book by, uh, in about a week's time is what the publisher keeps telling me. Um, and so there's a lot of passion that has gone into it, a lot of interviews, a lot of insights, a lot of CXO conversations. So I, I hope to condense all of that and present it to you in a concise, meaningful, actionable form. Uh, over the next uh, 40, 45 minutes or so. So we will get started. I have a very quick uh, intro slide just so that you know where I come from. I lead an organization called Nolscape. We are a 10 year old organization uh, in the space of experiential learning and assessments. We work with uh, large organizations to do employee development using gamification and simulations. Uh, I did my undergrad in Bits Pilani focused on computer science. Then I did my master's in the US, again, focused on computer science, and I worked for Oracle in the Silicon Valley for a few years. Um, and I got bitten by the creativity bug. Uh, you see a couple of pictures of me, uh, one where I'm directing a short film, and the other where I'm acting as Don Corleone uh, in a short film that got selected at the uh, San Francisco International Film Festival. So those were um, you know, confusing times for me because at Oracle, I was filing uh, patents and doing uh, deeply technical work, whereas weekends were devoted to storytelling and filmmaking. So that, that, that was a classic right brain, left brain kind of a problem. So I decided to take a pause. Um, that's when I went to INSEAD in uh, France. I did the MBA program from there. And they have two campuses, one in France, one in Singapore. So I graduated from the Singapore campus uh, in the year 2008. And uh, immediately after graduating, I started Nolscape. Uh, so initially we worked with a lot of B schools across the world, uh, MIT and NCR, ISB in India, co-creating experiential learning products for the classroom. And then we pivoted, started working with uh, companies. Um, and today we work with around 300 plus organizations across 25 countries and we are physically present in four countries as we speak, uh, headquartered in Singapore. Uh, we have presence in Malaysia, India and the US. So that's a quick story about Nolscape and what I do currently. And uh, so I've been writing a lot um, on Live Mint. So I, I do a column on digital and what it does to all of us and how should we be preparing for the digital age. If you get a chance, go online to Live Mint and read some of those articles. 
and i also have done um, you know visiting prof stents short you know guest lectures at insead at um, iim bangalore and a few other b schools and i've done uh, three tedx talks a couple of them on learning and how we can learn better through experiential methodologies and one of the talks was a little off beat it was about the pursuit of happiness in life so that's uh, very quickly uh, who i am and what i've been up to um, of late so uh, let's quickly look at the topic uh, at hand which is all about digital and this is the book um, i'm i'm i've authored it is coming out um, hopefully in the next uh, week or so um, so when you see this on the stands you know what to do so i'm a big believer in gamification of learning uh, so i don't intend to make this uh, talk one way uh, let's uh, have some fun with this topic so i'm a big believer of quizzing and gamification we'll we'll start with this particular question what are we looking at here what is this contraption and this is a five point question let's see who gets it right you can leave a, a note on the chat window what are we looking at here just to be sure the 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 person on the right is a human being <laughs> and and i'm i'm referring to the the black object on the left what do you think that is is it a door it is not a door okay people can uh, put in their comments in the chat window yeah it has uh, something to do with digital obviously so let's try and figure out what, is it a phone uh, it yeah it look like a giant iphone right but it's not a phone is it a speaker it is not a speaker Okay, anyone else? Rajshri uh, from the audience volunteered with an answer, but how about the others? Neha, Nitya, Priya, Rina. What is this black object that we are looking at? Is it PowerPoint? No. Is it a remote? No. Okay, um, so I'm going to give you the answer to this one. Uh, is is it a window? No. Is it a game board? No. All right, so I'll give you the answer to this one. Uh, hopefully, we'll. get warmed up by the next yeah it's something digital uh, priya you are right about that uh, so this is uh, the ibm debater what we are seeing in front of us is a debating contest between one of the world's best human debater debating against the ibm debating machine and you know how this all ended just like we've lost the uh, the chess championship we've lost in a game of go right this is a very complex uh, game and we've lost to uh, ai this is yet another example uh, where ai is catching up so this is the ibm debater now think about it what is um, what we need to pick up from this trend is that you know automation has has taken away a lot of jobs in the industrial domain right so we know if you go into a mercedes benz factory they say uh, in that factory you will find one human being and a dog right and there's obviously a joke uh, what's the role of the dog the role of the dog is to make sure that the human being doesn't mess up with the factory and what's the role of the human being the role of the human being is to feed the dog right the point here is you know automation has uh, done you know a lot of things in the industrial world many of the physical things that we used to do uh, you know all that has been automated now what is the next frontier for this is cognitive jobs right if a machine can debate in a human like way think about what might happen to decision making traditionally in companies we have the ceo saying you know what we need to enter china next year and suddenly if you have an ibm debater in the room and it debates to the ceo that you shouldn't be doing this look at weather patterns look at you know agricultural output look at trade numbers i don't know what other variables will have an impact on the chinese economy but it's able to crunch all those numbers and give you a reason for why something should be done or not done right and i think it's going to be revolutionary in the way uh, we make decisions and the way um, you know you know cognitive work gets done in the future so in the next few examples what i will focus on is the blurring away of certain lines so here the line that's blurring away is the line between the human and the machine where the human ends and where the machine begins we will not be able to tell maybe a year from now we will all be augmented in one way or the other all right so that was a five point question uh, i hope you have warmed up sufficiently let's look at uh, the next question 
And this is a 10 point question. Let's see who gets this one. What are we looking at here? So if you can guess uh, what we are looking at here, and if you can also guess the company that launched this. Okay, Priya says it has something to do with signals. Any other answers? Rachi, do you have an answer for this? What are we looking at here? Okay, is it heart rate or health related? Okay, quite close. Okay, in this case, I'll give Rina five points. Uh, good going. So this is not this health related in the sense that um, Rachi, do you want to guess? Okay, Shasta, go ahead and uh, please input it in the chat window. Yeah, so I see a hand going up. Shasta, uh, Shasta I also unmute. I'm trying to unmute you, but please go and put it in your website visit. Okay, is it website visit? No, the answer is um, what you're seeing in uh, in front of you is actually a smart toothbrush. Okay, oh. and uh, which is connected to a mobile app. And if you can see, it says session average, uh, daily, weekly, monthly. So what it's essentially capturing is your your brushing patterns, right? How how much duration? Uh, you know, what duration are you? Uh, what amount of time are you spending brushing each day? Are you first of all brushing? Um, and your uh, oral health as well, right? Now the question is, which company do you think came up with this innovation? Which company has launched this? Okay, Oral B, you think? No, you might come up with other answers like Colgate or Pepsodent. That's what you would think. But in this case, this was actually launched by an insurance company called Bean Dental Insurance, right? Now. I understand this model, um, an insurance company, to me, insurance is this really boring industry where nothing happens, right? So the last 100, 150 years, they've been doing the same thing, uh, right? Doing some kind of uh, an algorithm to understand the risk of a particular asset or a person's health, and you're uh, attaching a price to that risk and you, and you all pay a premium to it. So that model has existed for a very long time. Now, suddenly with the advent of digital, Companies are getting into devices like this that capture data. And can you think about how this data might be used by the insurance company? How will they use this data? In the past, in the, in the industrial era, it was a one size fits all approach, right? So everybody in their twenties will pay, you know, hundred rupees as premium, for example, and uh, older people pay more, but that was, you know, a, a very um, one size fit all kind of an approach, but with data, what you're able to now get is hyper personalization, what people call as N equals one, right? So using my brushing patterns or my driving patterns or my uh, health using Fitbit, for example. So these are devices that are capturing data and this data is now being used to unlock new revenue models. Uh, a, a dull and boring industry like insurance suddenly has woken up and is innovating very interestingly beyond the boundaries of their industry. Now think about it. This data can be used in other ways, right? So I can uh, fix up a dentist appointment for you. So this is uh, an insurance company that has launched uh, a smart toothbrush, which competes against Colgate. It generates data and it allows me to fix up an appointment for you with uh, with a doctor, right? And they are saying um, Amazon through Alexa is also trying to do something similar. And yesterday I heard based on your voice, the change in voice, it can detect whether you've got a cold, uh, whether you're feeling well, and it can fix up an appointment with a doctor, um, you know, ASAP. So that's the era that we are getting into where industry boundaries are blurring away, right? And uh, the next example will actually give you a better sense of what's going on here. What are we looking at in this example? What do you think is special or digital about these shoes? Any answers to this? Now we need to really think shoes and digital. Uh, does it, uh, you know, help us run faster? <laughs> and as you notice, it's, uh, it has a Pizza Hut logo on it. Now, what's Pizza Hut doing with shoes? Nitya says it has a map app installed. Why would you need that, Nitya? Why do you think? Yeah, uh, you can use the chat instead of the uh, question and uh, answer. And she says for the delivery boys. Ah, okay. So, yes. So, it does make sense. Um, you know, you could uh, give the shoe to the delivery boys and 
uh, maybe your route planning uh, can be uh, done. You, but why shoes? They've got phones, right? It makes you wonder why would. So if you uh, look this up online, Pizza Hut has launched a series of shoes called uh, Pie Top series of shoes. And um, and no, this is not for the delivery boys. This is for consumers like us. Uh, and the fascinating the thing here is it's got a button. And when you press that button, they will deliver your favorite pizza, which is preset uh, with them. They'll deliver that exact same pizza to wherever you are. So when I saw this example, I, I couldn't tell if this was like a genius master stroke or is this, is this plain stupid? Right, but that's the nature of innovation, right? You can't judge uh, something like this. If Amazon does stuff like this uh, using Amazon Echo, why can't Pizza Hut do it, right? Now, the thing that we need to pay attention to is how companies are thinking about experience, right? Ultimately, can I catch a person at the moment of desire, right? After I've made up my mind about eating something before I go to Swiggy, just at the moment of desire, can you catch the person? So that they click a button and it's delivered. Instant gratification, right? So you will see that many companies are going beyond their own products to really think about the customer experience journey. What is happening in, this, uh, in the life of the customer, which is triggering them to get into our product, right? And can we catch them there? So I'm guessing, this is just a wild guess. Why did they have to do uh, introduce this uh, the buy top series of shoes. I'm guessing a lot of us uh, do promise ourselves, right? And, and given that this is January, this is very relevant. I'm sure a lot of us made up um, some New Year resolutions and we said, this year I'm going to run. I'm going to run a marathon. And we also promise ourselves that if I run, let's say three kilometers every day, at the end of it, I'll treat myself to something, right? Maybe that's what they are going after, right? Maybe that's a crucial customer insight that you and I are not privy to. Maybe they've done the research. I'm just guessing, or it's just a plain stupid idea. I don't know. Um, maybe you'll wear these shoes, you'll go out for a run. You've completed the, the 3K run and you feel great about yourself and you are pressing the button and you get your favorite uh, pizza delivered to wherever you are. So the, the industry boundary that's blurring away here, right? So pizza company getting into shoes, right, is the sign of the digital age. Companies no longer are comfortable boxing themselves into their comfort, comfort zones. They are venturing out into areas that are unfamiliar and they have uh, this idea of experimentation, rapid trial and error, right? So there are many, many more examples that I could share with you on what companies are doing that examples of stuff that goes beyond the boundaries, right? Where, boundaries are getting blurred. So just to give you an idea, I've, I've given you three examples of lines that are blurring away. But before I present to you the central thesis of the book, let me get this definition out of the way because uh, when you ask this question, what is digital to different people, you'll get different answers and it's mind blowing. So, so to some people, it is all about automation. Uh, for others, it is going paperless. It's ones and zeros. For some, it is connectivity. Uh, it's about speed, on demand. So many such um, you know adjectives get used. But to me, what has been most useful is to think of digital using this definition. Digital is not a thing. Many companies that we work with, they usually say, "Hey, I've got a mobile app, so that means I'm digital, right?" Or I've got a social media presence through which we do digital marketing. That should make me digital, right? So the answer to all of this is it's it's a clear no. Uh, that doesn't make you digital because digital is not a thing. It is not a destination. It is a way of doing things. It is all the mindset, which is why many people you will um, hear this uh, saying, you know, digital is not really about technology. Technology is an enabler, but digital is really about the mindset and the way of working, right? So it's a way of doing things. You're obviously leveraging technology to achieve three outcomes. So from now on, when you hear the word digital, try and anchor that conversation to one of the three things. You will find that there's a lot of clarity and structure around it. The first one is exceptional customer experience, right? So in the industrial era, the, the word that we all obsessed with was efficiency, right? That's, you know, things have to work like clockwork 
and you did economies of scale, you mass produce things and you would push these products through your channels. So that's the operating model for the industrial era. But in the digital age, experience is becoming front and center right the customer experience the word customer here i'm using loosely it could be your internal customers your employees as well so this has become a defining uh, element in decision making between ola and uber for example if there's a two second delay in the app opening up or some kind of slowness you'll switch loyalty doesn't mean much in the digital era so this is becoming front and center the second one is around being agile, right? So the word agile, I, maybe some of you are agile project managers uh, or agile specialists. The word agile usually um, brings to your mind a speed connotation, right? Maybe it's about doing something fast or it's about being responsive. All these are true, uh, right? It is about doing something fast. It is about doing something in a responsive fashion. The best way to understand this is imagine you're going from point A to point B. Uh, in the industrial world, we assumed point B to be static and we would rush towards point B, right? In a, in a linear fashion. But in today's context, they, they call it VUCA or whatnot. This point B is constantly shifting around, right? So you're not sure, uh, you don't want to run in a direction and then realize point B has shifted out. Uh, so you want to take incremental steps. You take one step, orient yourself, observe, see if the destination has changed, right? Agile is really an incremental way of developing something. And at the same time, being fast about failure and learning, and then uh, you're responding to um, customer demand, right? So the most important thing in Agile is to create value for the customer. Otherwise you're wasting resources. The last element is unlocking new value. While experience and agile are about doing perhaps things faster, cheaper and better, right? But that's been always the name of the game. Faster, cheaper, better has always been the name of the game. Nothing unique about it. To me, the game changer with digital is unlocking new value. So if you think about it, it's not like we did not have cabs five years, 10 years ago, but today you have a software layer that is, um, you know, sort of you know, wrapping itself around cabs and it's extracting a lot of value. Which company am I referring to? Uber, of course. It's not like we did not have spare rooms in our homes, uh, but today there is a software layer that is wrapping itself around that particular unutilized asset and it is generating a lot of value. Here I'm referring to Airbnb, right? So, uh, which is why many years ago, Mark Andreessen, a famous venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, said that software is eating the world. Today, uh, you, you look around you, you know this to be true, right? Be it a taxi industry or healthcare, you name it, education, every single industry is getting eaten by software, right? And now there's an extension to it. They say AI is eating software, uh, right? But that's another story. The whole idea is how do you unlock new value? And this is happening because of data, which is why a lot of people say, data is a new oil a quick statistic to prove this point five years ago if you made a list of companies that were the largest in terms of market capitalization this is a quiz question it's worth 10 points you can redeem this at your nearest cafeteria um, what sort of companies would you have seen on the list top 10 companies in the largest companies in the world uh, by market cap what sort of companies would you have seen on that list five years ago? Can you name a couple of companies that were really large in terms of market cap? Yeah, so a couple of examples on the chat, kind of companies that uh, were on that list five years ago, largest in terms of market cap. There's Apple, Alibaba. Okay, Apple, Alibaba, so Rajshree Singh, IBM. So what you would realize is five years ago, you would have seen the oil companies major banks, right? So that's the Exxon Mobiles of the world, right? So they were on that list. Now you look at that list today, you'll realize seven out of the top 10 companies worldwide by market cap are software platform companies, right? It includes Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Alibaba, Microsoft, right? And, and this is literally the story of data being the new oil. Oil companies have been pushed out. Data companies are on that list. And that's how these companies 
become stronger and stronger because they've got truckloads of data using which they are unlocking new value. So that the, the digital haves and have nots is a, really a story of data and AI. The ones that have got the data and can use it smartly end up becoming more and more powerful, right? So that's the story. So now having understood digital, let's uh, go into the digital blur story, right? So when I looked at this particular quote by Pierre Nanter, uh, today he's the ex-CEO of Accenture. Uh, he stepped down this month. Uh, this is a quote that caught my attention. He says digital is the main reason why over half of the companies on the Fortune 500 list have disappeared from that list. If you, if you look at it, uh, there's nothing surprising about companies falling off that list because, you know, companies do have, um, uh, yeah, they, they do fall off that list because of poor performance. What is stunning about this is the sheer scale, right? Half of the companies, which is 250 companies have become irrelevant. I'm here talking about Blackberry. I'm talking about Blockbuster. I'm talking about Toys R Us. All these companies had the best CEOs, best management. They were successful over many, many years, but suddenly digital comes in and they lose the plot. Why does this happen? So this is the question that I started with when I started researching for the book. Uh, when I asked this to people, they say, hey, this is because we didn't adapt ourselves fast enough. True. Uh, we did not know the game plan of the tech companies. That's also true. We understand our nearest competitor, but we have no idea how Google is thinking about our industry, right? So that's all true. But I, when I peeled the onion, it became quite apparent that some of the lines that we are used to from the industrial aid, these lines were simply disappearing and they were blurring away, right? And a large company is not getting this. They are still holding on to these lines out of sheer inertia and habit. Whereas digital natives have no illusions around these lines, right? So they know these lines don't exist. So what sort of lines are these? Digital blur, blur is an acronym, uh, which stands for boundaryless organizations. When you think about Uber, for example, there's a classic, you would have seen this. How many cars does Uber have? How many cars do they own? The answer is zero. How many uh, rooms does Airbnb actually own? The answer is zero. How many uh, network towers does Skype have? The answer is zero. What's going on here, right? Because in the industrial era, we thought ownership was very important. That's what led you to dominate a particular industry. Whereas in the digital age, it is all about access. You don't have to own it. All you need to develop is access to the right resources and the ability to connect with these resources onto your platform that then you can deliver to your customers. So in that respect, many digital native companies like Uber or Airbnb or Google, they operate in a boundaryless fashion. Anything and everything can become a resource for them to add value to the customer, which is quite a departure from the traditional way of thinking, right? Which, which says anything within my organization is what I can exercise control over, right? So that's a different way of approaching it. Second is uh, limitless digitization. Anything that you see around you, literally anything, the, the chair that you're sitting on. Today, it's, uh, it's a, it's a non-intelligent object, right, the chair. Now, the simplest way to make it a digital chair is to slap a sensor on it and connect it to the cloud, right? It, it becomes digital. And you might ask me, why would you do that? What's the rationale for doing it? To which I will say, I don't know. I will know the answer when I see some data coming out of it. Now think about it. What sort of data can uh, a chair give us, right? If you think about it, you'll be surprised. There is a lot of behavioral data that can come out of this chair. For example, you're sitting on a chair. Um, let's say you are in a meeting, a very important um, boardroom presentation. Um, and, um, right? and, and, and so are the people engaged in this meeting or not? So that's uh, something that the chair can tell you. I can look at a mobile app. Uh, it'll tell you, you know, heart rate, uh, you know, posture. Is this person sitting on the chair for too long? It might give you an alert saying, sitting is a new smoking, better stand up. So what I'm trying to drive home here is every object that is in the physical world will also potentially is going forward. As many um, researchers are saying, the line between the physical, digital, and the biological, you know, is already blurring away. A lot of people are choosing to have 
a microchip embedded inside their body, precisely between your thumb and the uh, index finger. You can have a chip embedded, right? As a professional, I dream of a day where I can download Wikipedia into this and I don't have to learn for the rest of my life. Uh, so that's limitless digitization, which means we will be living in and we're going to cope up with this um, with this human machine coexistence, right? So that's a big question here. Unbounded innovation is all about industry lines blurring away. Think about it for a second. When uh, driverless cars become uh, mainstream, even when they become mainstream, think about the kind of industries that will have to rethink their game. Starting with uh, maybe insurance. You know, what are you really insuring? You have to think about that, right? Um, or it could be your traffic signal, the infrastructure design. That has to be rethought because the red, amber, green, uh, the traffic signal is for irrational human drivers. But for uh, connected cars, you don't need that design. To traffic cops, to emergency wards, parking lots, you have to rethink the entire game, right? So connected cars is just one concept like this. There are 36, at least 36 transformative technologies that are all coming into the industry 4.0 uh, all at the same time. So all these technologies have the promise of blurring away many industries. Lawyers, you know, they, we thought lawyers are irreplaceable. How can a, a robo uh, replace a lawyer? Today with uh, blockchain, banking, uh, the legal profession, accounting, all of these uh, you know, professions are getting questioned. Lastly, relentless iteration. That's a story of the time dimension uh, blurring away, the now, new, and the next, right? Um, so many companies uh, will have a strategy around this, right? So they'll uh, say, I have a strategy for the now. This is what we need to do now. Next 18 months, we need to do this. Next five year time horizon, uh, we need to do X, Y, and Z. So today, when I talk to senior leaders, they laugh me out of the room when they, when I ask them, what's your five year plan? They say, I have visibility beyond a year, uh, let alone 18 months or 36 months. So the now, new, and the next are all playing out at the same time. And it's all happening in rapid iterations, right? So this is not a full stop. In the industrial era, we could say, I'm done, right? I'm done with the product and it's a full stop. Today, there is no full stop, it's a comma, right? And those of us, and I know there are a lot of us who like to make to-do lists daily. And at the end of the day, you like to have a psychological high when you uh, cross out that thing from your um, to-do list. In the digital world, there's no scratching out. It's a comma that you have and you need to relentlessly iterate on something because every system that you're producing is living and breathing data. And as long as that is happening, there is still more work to be done. As you can realize, this has deep implication. Blur has deep implication for the way companies have to respond to this, right? Uh, from a strategy perspective, if you're operating in a boundaryless fashion, you have to become an ecosystem, you have to become a platform uh, where others can participate as well. Limitless digitization, where data becomes your core strategy. Unbounded innovation, where you think design, you think like a designer, and you create great experience for your customers. And relentless iteration is a story of agility, right? How fast can I change my products, my strategy, and so on and so forth. So each of these things are firstly a mindset item, right? Firstly, something needs to change in, our, in the way we think about the way of working, right? And I'll talk about it in the next couple of slides. So if you think about, you know, as leaders, why even leaders, everybody is a leader in the digital age, um, what are some competencies we need to develop? What are some areas that as individuals we need to focus on in the digital blur era? When everything is becoming boundaryless and companies are starting to integrate uh, to Paytm, to you know, book my show, right? And you're creating an integrated offer. The, the mindset is that of an orchestrator. You don't have to create everything yourself. Just like Uber does not have to produce cars, they are in the business of connecting and facilitating, right? Can we as individuals also get in the business of connecting ideas to people, to resources, instead of trying to create everything from scratch, right? Because in the digital world, unlike the industrial world, we truly live in the era of abundance. The factors of production, people, money, and technology are all available to do uh, many interesting things. Limitless digitization, we need to become awesome at sense making, 
when you look at data the ability to connect these data points in interesting ways and more importantly narrate a story around this data that others can understand and act upon so that sense making leader design leader i truly believe that in the future where everything is automated and you'll have ai playing a big role the area where humans will thrive is perhaps in the design space because that's the space where empathy comes in where you know what it feels to be a human right and you are you can empathize and you can design for that experience so i would strongly recommend anything that you do it could be a party that you host at home or a, or a mobile app that you develop can you think like a designer and more precisely can you think more like a game designer if you think about it angry bird somebody somewhere created this game and we were hooked to this experience for many months on end right so there is a science and art of creating awesome experience so can we all think like designers and finally can we all become more agile in the way we learn things uh, instead of saying i know it all can we start by saying i don't know and i'm comfortable with it and i have the humility to say i will go find out i'll seek help uh, right so that's the mindset of an agile leader and they follow the build better learn cycle where learning is integral to becoming uh, agile so this, these are i think the core competencies we need to build in the digital age the more networked you are the better off you are the more sense making you are the more design that you apply in your area of work you will stand out and the more agile you are and you learn and apply things i think that's going to hold you in good stead in the digital age so now uh, think about the organizations that you will get into or you are already part of um we need to reimagine the way of working which is the cultural element as well if um, you know organizations become boundaryless it means that one should be able to act in an open manner right so we are not hoarding stuff we are sharing things and we are okay to collaborate uh, you know across functional boundaries even across companies right that's how you create larger value how do you embrace data enabled culture Uh, so if you look, look at it in a lot of organizations decisions uh, get made by this methodology we have and it's a joke um, it goes by hippo h i p p o what does it stand for it stands for highly paid persons opinion right that seems to be the norm for taking decisions in inside companies and the other day i saw hippo has been uh, upgraded to zebra and zebra stands for zero evidence but really arrogant uh, right so that model of a hierarchical decision making process or command and control kind of a process needs to give way to more of a data enabled process maybe guided by some ai but ultimately you know the human uh, intuition and an expertise blended with that data you know is what we are looking at diverse and inclusive culture this is not just from a dni perspective that we have you know a tick mark on our hr agenda not from that perspective because i see this as core to innovation as a platform as an ecosystem if not diverse and inclusive if you're not hearing your partners out if you're not listening to your customers you're not inclusive about design you might create something that is your product but it doesn't help doesn't create a win win uh, to be able to operate in an ecosystem win win is the model of thinking right so being diverse and inclusive becomes the back to culture um, of of uh, organization that succeeds and lastly for relentless iteration fail fast learn fast culture and not holding on to your idea so close and so dearly to yourself that you not give up on your bad idea how can you quickly learn from experience move on try new things be in experimental mode right so and these are uh, i think table stakes if we if you don't have these four dimensions in an organization i think digital transformation will not succeed that's uh, that's a plain reality here because all these four elements are integral for responding to the blur phenomenon so now what can we prepare for i'm sure you're thinking uh, and i i got a chance to look at all your expectations from uh, this particular session ultimately it boils down to okay all this is fine uh, i know these things are happening in the digital world what can i do how can i be future ready so i'm sure that question is uh playing in your mind and this is what i do right to stay relevant uh at nonscape and in general 
uh, in the digital world one thing is it's very hard to keep up because so many things are happening around us so the the one thing that i rely on is my network so build a great network on linkedin on twitter uh, on twitter it's it's okay to follow an abhishek bachan for entertainment but he is unlikely to give you great wisdom on uh, digital there are extraordinary thought leaders on digital so can we build a network can we you know connect with these thought leaders can we learn from their experience because today you get all that wisdom for free right and it's broken down for you. uh so that's step number 1 can you develop an outside in perspective right and and constantly being curious uh, and and hyper aware on what's going on in the world and constantly connecting those dots and having conversations with people that's a great way to learn uh developing working understanding of technologies and their impact right it's not important that we need to all be great at iot and blockchain and this and that it's uh, impossible for all of us to keep up but at least a working understanding of understanding the impact okay if iot is getting into healthcare i think these are the five things that will get disrupted right so you sort of becoming a futurist there and then you you know what to do right now uh, right so if you understand the impact the one thing that i would uh, encourage you to do while there are a lot of technologies that you could be learning at the base of it all there is data right and i spoke about how data is a new oil uh, it's a life blood of of uh, being digital the one thing that you can and should do a deep dive on is data analytics right we should all become a little more fam be familiar with data and how to read data and this is about digital literacy like financial literacy numerical literacy and and you know linguistic literacy so this is digital literacy to me digital literacy starts with data right and and i know some of us including myself i have a challenge here uh, you know when i'm an engineer i've done in mba i i can't look at excel spreadsheet for too long it gives me a headache but i've told myself that you know this is the language in the digital age right and we need to get better at it it's a core digital skill the other one is committing to lifelong learning never stagnate invest in your capability development uh be it attending a conference or a webinar because those things also give you a network and and you know you know commit to capability development and be intentional about it not just random right so pick an area and and go for a mastery and be intentional about what you do think like a designer i spoke about this uh pick problems that you want and not to solve those issues and uh, the mindset is always staying curious uh, understanding what's ha what's happening in healthcare what's happening in media so these are some of things that you can learn and apply in your own domain and above all develop an experimental mindset it's okay to fail uh, but set up the the uh, the safety net and last and final question this uh, question is get this one who is the gentleman and uh, what's it connect with digital i'll give you a um, a clue he is uh, he, he was the next champion of this sport of this game all right vinita you are the clear winner of this um, gamified master class uh, you walk away with 100 points kudos to you so this is gary cap uh, the chess grandmaster right you know what happened to him uh, there's a an absolutely brilliant ted talk you watch um, and it inspires me every time i get some confusion around digital i go back and watch that video um there's a narrative that you hear in the media is oh ai is coming and it's taking over all our jobs right that's an either or narrative i think that there's a more empowering narrative which is that it could end and his ted talk actually talks about that he lost to the ibm supercomputer in the in the 97 98 time frame what's interesting is there were two contests the first one he actually won nobody talks about it the first, second one he lost and that um, you know goes on to become headline and what's interesting is between the two contests the machine learned right and the human did not why why should we we be up why should we be afraid of technology if we embrace them and we know how to use them well in our area i think we'll come out as winner so i hope it, that story inspires you as much as it uh, inspired me uh, so let me pause and happy to take any questions that you may have Thank you, Rajiv. That was brilliant. I mean, to start with, it got us a little worried <laughs> because there's there was you know so much that one needs to be aware of, and I was wondering how does one learn all of this to be relevant today. But I think the last slide that you put in in terms of you know what one needs to start with 
um, it's not to learn all technologies in the world it's impossible uh, but at least you know have an appreciation for what's coming and the two uh, big points for me was you know have a designer's mind always yep. i think that's absolutely important you know uh, yep. to be able to uh, try and um, figure out what problems and really you know it is to solve them so i'll uh, let the yep. uh, rest of uh, the audience um, Uh, put in their thoughts questions comments uh, you could raise hands and we'll try to unmute you otherwise you can please go ahead and put in your question in the chat window or the q and a window and we will ask and uh, uh, get answers from rajiv um, we still have 10 minutes so uh, time for a lot of questions please make use of this opportunity uh, rajiv uh, is the expert uh, in this field uh, so let's make use of his time now that he's available for us And and Vinita, I'll get your coordinates, and I'll send you a signed copy of the book for winning the contest. Wow! <laughs> so Rajiv, uh, while people may be still thinking of their questions, um, so now we understand that it is absolutely important for us to kind of understand this world and see how we move into it. Uh, and you've also seen uh, um, the kind of uh, audience profile that I shared with you. Many of them being on a break for some number of years and wanting to restart. Uh, what may be you know a very quick starting point for them to get you know a bit more you know in depth understanding of this field which can probably take them towards um, better interview experience you know kind of uh, able to impress upon the interviewer that they are clued in and to this yeah so um, when i think about readiness for digital there are um, think of it as three bubbles right so it's, it's like a venn diagram Uh, excuse me i'm an in, uh, engineer always think in terms of diagrams and bubbles so um, there are three bubbles that we need to sort of bring together to say that okay i've got the picture right um, one element is no functional piece right if, if you're a digital marketer and i saw some of us are uh, in the marketing domain and we are looking at digital marketing right so there is a digital element and there's a marketing marketing element and you bring these two things together right so that's a techno functional piece of digital so i would encourage you to get certified uh, you know go to some workshop get yourself up to date if possible um, you know in today's context is very easy to start up your own website i, I would encourage you to do it um, i'm sure some of us are blogging quite a lot be it about technology or cooking or gardening or traveling whatever your area of interest maybe you know can you run that like a business you may not have a commercial motive uh, behind it which is completely fine but can you build an audience around it right in the process of doing that you will touch upon all things that are needed for digital right you will know how to make something viral you will uh, learn the uh, tips and tricks of doing seo marketing for example and how do i boost my uh, my presence online or how do i get my get influencers to talk about my stuff right so uh, what i would recommend is can you take your your pet project right whatever it could be right from traveling to yoga whatever it is can you start taking that to a digital domain where you're passionate about it and you want to reach a, a certain audience and in that process you will get hands on experience i i feel experiential learning is the best way to learn um and so i would recommend that you and that's what i meant by um, you know the experimenter's mindset can you spend say 1000 rupees to get a domain spend enough time get some certifications on digital marketing and actually do it yourself right so that's going to give you a lot of confidence and when you are in an interview scenario and people ask you hey you know what have you done right and you can show your blog and say hey i've got 10000 followers or 20000 50000 followers and this is what i did that's the value people want to see right can you take an idea to scale right and that's valuable in a startup it's valuable in a large company that's probably what i would recommend for people who are trying to get into the industry they want to showcase Uh, new capabilities. Yeah, so there's one more question. Uh, what, in your view, are three behavioral changes that uh, novices need to focus on? Um, the the first one, I would say, uh, is around learning. Uh, and there could be a bias because I'm in the learning space as well. But I know this to be through through a lot of anecdotes, looking at how people are evolving in the digital age. Uh, if you're not into reading books, for example. right uh, it need not be a 300 page book even book summaries right there there are some really cool apps that give you 
interesting book summaries uh, you know get into the habit of uh, reading books uh, follow people on um, on twitter and linkedin uh, you could um, and the best way i i realized over time to learn is to actually write right i know it's it's difficult for all of us it's a nightmare for me to think about just sitting in front of a computer and starting to write somehow i had to overcome that but i realized the more you start producing the clearer your head become right uh, so that's a behavioral change right don't be a passive consumer the point i'm trying to make is be a producer as well right and so you'll realize your learning just accelerates uh, so those are some behavioral changes uh, that i would encourage don't be passive uh, digital is not something that you can sit on the fence on you need to roll up your sleeves and participate in it right so rena has a question on if i were an entrepreneur what three uh, digital learning will help me scale my business all right so um so when i think about entrepreneurship right so there are four um, questions you need to ask one is around the idea itself right so i i call it the founder idea fitment it's not like everybody can run any idea right so if you ask me can i uh, do a startup in the dairy space where i can create some application of in the dairy industry putting an example here maybe i will not get connected to that idea at all i am just guessing right so firstly there has to be an a founder idea fitment and right? something that you're passionate about and you're willing to give it all second is there is an idea solution fitment for the idea or the problem that you have identified is there a viable and feasible solution sometimes it may you may not get a practical solution for it so spend a lot of time iterating over what's the right solution for it then there is a solution market fitment for the solution you come up with are companies or individuals willing to pay for it that's a litmus test right um, so you know iterate over that and lastly there is a solution scale fitment and this is a choice sometimes you may choose to not scale anything at all it's completely fine uh, if you say i want to run something boutique uh, it, it's a choice but that's the last filter so i would say start with these four questions think about what is founder idea fitment actually mean and what do i have to learn personally about myself what my interests are uh, before i can even get into the business domain and start thinking about what needs to be done there then the idea solution then the market fitment and then the scale fitment so i would probably prioritize my learning across these four levels and go deeper into each of these four areas did that didn't answer your question oh uh, well we can wait for the next question um i just want you to kind of mention uh, what is the importance of you know a digital presence for any candidate today um, and of course we have linkedin uh, beyond that how important i mean how how much does your organization you know uh, rely on that when they do look at candidates yeah so um, and, and interestingly it's very important for organizations also to take it seriously because many people who come for interviews uh, to nonscape apply to us because we have a great uh, glass door rating and we are a great place to work and all of that uh, right it's equally important for organizations also to take care of it because the first and sometimes the last impressions are also happening completely online impressions are getting created right so, so i know a lot of recruiters first look at linkedin um, and within that it's very important Uh, to have the right profile talk about things that matter uh, right sometimes i find that uh, we're not showcasing ourselves too well and an active producer also really helps right if you're writing articles for example i would value that a lot right so if i'm looking for a, a business development candidate and i go to his linkedin or her linkedin uh, profile and i see that in addition to just liking and sharing a few things is this person producing something of value to me that that matters a lot because you know you are putting a line on the sand you you know you are you are uh, committing yourself to an idea right to me that's very valuable uh, so i i value producers a lot um so think about what you want to showcase in these platforms as well uh, certifications your articles your publications uh you, your associations with uh, maybe some industry bodies uh, your volunteering that's very important as well because it it gives you it gives a reader a sense for your uh profile your your uh your personality as well very important in digital age to also project a human face right we all ultimately connect as human beings so it's very important to uh, showcase that really well 
So we have one more minute before we wind up. Any last thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions? It uh, doesn't look like uh, anything else. So I will thank uh, Rajiv on uh, behalf of uh, the Foundation and all our community members for taking time out for this wonderful session. And uh, please uh, do uh, follow uh, Rajiv on uh, the Twitter handle and on LinkedIn, as he mentioned, because it's important that we are well networked with thought leaders, because that's fair. We also get our inspiration, but we also get to understand what's happening around in the industry so that we can kind of go towards uh, or rather have a direction in terms of where we have to channelize our learning and hence uh, uh, also the actions that we need to take after we've kind of learned uh, all those topics. So thank you, Raju, once again. And uh, I will uh, see you all again uh, next week for the next uh, Master Plus. All right. Thank you all. And Vinita, please connect with me on LinkedIn and drop me your coordinates uh, and I'll send the book as soon as I receive it. And thank you all. I hope this was useful. Let's stay connected. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.